Hey guys, this is Spanish Heart 18 here, and welcome to another unboxing and review. And tonight it's going to be for a highly anticipated piece. Uh, this is for the Batman Arkham City Dark Knight Returns version. It's the exclusive version. It's part of the Museum Master line, which is one third scale, and it's from Prime One Studios. This is my first Prime One Studios piece, and my first one third piece overall. So I'm really excited. I can't wait. And uh, yeah, let's open it up. So here are the art boxes, and as you can see, it's the picture of the, of the statue in the front and on the back. And on the sides is the iconic image from the first uh, installment of the, of the Dark Knight Returns story, which is pretty iconic. And uh, the, I think the top is the, the Frank Miller logo of the bat symbol. And yeah, I mean, I would have preferred some Frank Miller art from, or some panels from the Dark Knight Returns. Just to give, well, just to give like a, an homage to the original source material, or um, just to kind of like showcase that. But you know, it's pretty cool. I mean, I do like the muted colors. I do like the way his eyes pop and the, the blood spatter, <laughs> which looks like, in the in the background. And then in the bottom right corner, you can see the Arkham City logo, and it's based on the Arkham City skins from the game. And it was a pretty ingenious way of circumventing the fact that they didn't have the Dark Knight Returns license. And with that, they were able to, you know, um, do certain skins that were in the game, such as the Dark Knight Returns, Batman Beyond, uh, Batman Noel. And yeah, it was a pretty crafty move on their part. And I think now they've, taught, they've long since acquired the license, so um, it'll be interesting to see what kind of characters they do next. I mean, I would love to see like a uh, Batman on horse. <laughs> Just kidding. I would love to see, uh, uh, say, Superman, uh, mutant leader. Um, I wouldn't mind seeing the Joker, to name a few. So yeah, it's going to be a really exciting and interesting time. So my introduction to The Dark Knight Returns, I wouldn't say it was as memorable or as impactful as, say, Jeff's was over the Statue Sanctuary. During 1990 or during 1986, when this was first released, I think I was more heavily into Marvel comics and namely the X Men with the classic X Men reprints. But as a kid, I really loved the Saturday morning cartoons such as the Super Friends and uh, the Super Powers team. And yeah, but slowly as those cartoons were slowly being phased out, my love for Batman waned. And I think it was mainly due to the fact that he was just too goofy and too corny to take seriously as a character. I just found that he didn't really evolve after that. And it wasn't until 1989's um, Batman movie by Tim Burton that I really dove into Batman. It was uh, just uh, a revelation as far as portraying Batman as this really dark and complex and, and brooding and moody character that uh, really gravitated towards me. Um, yeah, I mean, it was just so hard not to get hyped up behind uh, behind the character from the movie and just from the whole Batmania craze that surrounded it. And after that was the animated series, which I absolutely loved and still love to this day. And it was um, those two pieces of work that really helped influence and helped cultivate my love for Batman. And just identifying Frank Miller's uh, influence in those two pieces of work and just following the threads back to his work, such as Year One, which heavily influenced Master of the Phantasm, which to this day remains my favorite Batman movie of all time. And The Dark Knight Returns, which when I first read it, I have to say I wasn't blown away. I was almost off put by it just because it didn't really uh, live up to my expectations of how Batman is or how I grew up thinking how Batman should be. As a kid, it was just over my head. The artwork for one was just too jaggy and dark and grim and the colors were like muted like watercolors, so it wasn't polished as the comics that I was used to reading. And secondly, there was like so many high concept themes and and ideas that that it tackled, such as mental health, um, political issues, social issues. Um, it's a parody of the media, you know. Those high concept themes that, that was just totally over my head that I didn't really, you know, couldn't really get. But it wasn't until I myself matured as a person that I fully that I started to really fully appreciate this story for what it was. Um, 
you know, um, just being able to see Batman deconstructed as, as a character and to see how he thinks and how he feels and just to see his inner monologue, to just to get into his psyche. It was just really chilling and, and really cool to, to really appreciate. And just the uh, themes of mental health issues such as maybe him uh, as a person being traumatized and, you know, just being obsessed with being Batman. Even though he was retired for 10 years, you know, it just kept on gnawing at him. And, and see how that, how Two-Face dealt with that as well. And then there was like the societal issues such as um, Batman being a fascist growing his own army to, to really police Gotham. And then seeing Superman, well seeing Superman like as this really corporate stooge and being naive and being able to be manipulated easy was kind of hard to take. But within the context of the story, it kind of worked as a, a foil for Batman in a way. So, you know, it was just dealing with that, you know, just taking it as, a, as not canon in a way. It's taking it as its own piece of art. It, that was the only way that I can really fully appreciate this this story by Frank Miller. And and yeah, I mean, growing up, being able to experience life and just going back to this, you know, it was just uh, it was just probably the only way I could really fully appreciate just the themes and topics and the the, the story as a whole, and just why it was it's fully it's really revered by by both comic book fans and non-fans. So this is the styrofoam with the Prime 1 logo on the top, and the top uh, being labeled as such. So I'm assuming this is the base. This is the box two of two, the smaller of the boxes. So let's lift this baby up and see what it looks like. Hopefully it comes intact, fingers crossed. So here we see uh, here see we see it with this uh, was it rayon or this really smooth and silky feeling uh, material covering the statue. And, uh, yeah, as I unwrap it, ooh, it looks really really cool. And I love the texture to it. You can see the gray. You can see, you can smell the fresh statue smell. The toxic pink fumes, maybe. <laughs> but yeah, wow. That leader looks really, that beaten leader there looks really cool. So hopefully, I'll be able to lift this out of the base without any trouble, and without dropping it. Ugh. Success! Oh my god. So I finally managed to take out the base, which was a chore. This base is really, really heavy and solid. Um, the texture. So just picking it up. Oh, wow. Solid piece. You can see the, the meat and leader. Uh, Looks like he's restrained. See the spiky nipples, the visor, the mohawk, and just a worn scar, I guess, across his chest. Really nice details here. This is really heavy. So, looking at under, here's the iconic silhouette of the Dark Knight. The edition size is 800 for the exclusive. I have um, 252. And there's the Arkham Knight logo or Arkham City logo. And, yep. Whoa, heavy. Solid piece. And the back is a Frank Miller designed Batsable. But yeah, what a. That thing's a piece of work. So this is box one of two, which has the body, the cape, heads, and all the other, other accessories. So here's the Prime 1 logo and the top, the here. 
And this came with the instruction um, pamphlet. Uh, some assembly instructions, assembling the, uh, putting the body to the base, the different switch out options, and what it comes with, and the uh, final instructions. So, hopefully, it'll look like this in the end, and hopefully, the parts aren't damaged. So, without further ado, let's take out the top layer first. And we have the body. And as I unwrap the material, wow. Holy shit, I am blown away. The rips in the suit. The sheen of the the cuts, it looks like it's fresh. And the stains are right around the, the cut marks. You can see the dried blood. Holy shit, this is this is high quality stuff. I am so fucking impressed. Wow. Man, this is huge. This guy's huge. Well, I'll do the body last. Holy smokes, I'm just so impressed. This right here is the left fist. Wow. It's like the metal fins. It looks amazing. And here we have the other fist. Fist is this one. Ooh. We get the, my favorite of the display options. We get the Batarang. Um, we get the Batarang with the rope and him clutching on it. And this is probably my preferred display piece, or display option. And I think it will be a lot of uh, people's as well. This looks like, it feels uh, plasticky. But yeah. This looks really cool. Wow. Um, I'm not sure what these are. These look like plastic adhesive strips. Please use it for adjusting the joints where ne necessary. Whoa. So I will keep that in mind. Make a mental note of that. So this is, <clears throat> has quite a weight to it. This is the regular portrait, I suppose. Very cool. Yeah. Looks like Miller to me. With the grimace. Very nice. Look at the paint between the the mask and the skin, very clean. The teeth is clean as well. Now that's how you do teeth. And now I will get the body out. Let's see how this looks. Just carefully. Oh, hopefully it isn't a pain in the ass like the base. Nope. Oh. foot out there whoa <laughs> heavy very solid and very thick love it wow <laughs> holy crap look at that that's a solid heavy piece and it should be for the amount that you're paying for look at the detail of the pouches the shading in the tights and the rips and the, the skin look at the sheen on that and the discoloration around it very detailed very detailed this is, wow I'm just so freaking impressed you can see the tension the, the 
the tautness of the material, the muscles. You can see it bunches up around the, the armpit. <laughs> very, very impressed. Holy crap. Just very impressed by the weight, the detailed, um, the detailing with the cuts and the, the discoloration around them is just amazing. And just the weight. Now, this is what it feels like to be holding a very expensive, high quality statue. Wow. And just looking at the paint flaws, there, you know, initial impressions are none. This is amazing. A thick peg right here. You can see the boots. There's some dirt specks on it, which kind of allude to his fight with the mutant leader in the second fight in the mud hole. I'm fucking impressed. Very impressed. Wow. Holy crap. Very nice prime one. So opening the bottom layer we get the cape we get the sniper rifle and we get a head and the batarang I guess the exclusive parts. Actually, correction, I don't think the battle damage is the exclusive. I think it might have been the regular, uh, the clean portrait. And this. But wow, this is, this looks awesome. Holy crap. Amazing. Let me get the sniper rifle. It looks very nice, very cool. There's no, looks like maybe gonna be like a sight there, but no. Um, there is some debate as whether some some of these parts are thickly cast. I think Sammy G mentioned that as well. And yeah, maybe Prime One could have gone with a, a leather strap with this, just to make it thicker or thinner. But it looks cool. Looks very nice. Probably an issue is maybe comic accuracy since he didn't use the, or Batman didn't use this when um, he was wearing his gray and his gray suit without the, the yellow symbol. But with the battle damaged portrait. Wow, you can see the bruising here, the cuts. It looks like he's torn to shreds. Just beat the shit from fighting the, fighting the mutant leader. Again, just clean, very clean, very impressive. The QC is so top notch so far. Really impressed. And just the, just how the factory is able to just replicate this. This is like almost proto quality. I haven't seen any flaws whatsoever yet. And that is impressive. Guys, if you have this guy coming, wow, prepare to be blown away. I am just, I am just blown away. Amazing. Holy crap. And I guess finally we have. The cape. Very nice. I love the texture, that leather-like texture to it. You can see the the individual kind of like um, leather pattern to it. It even feels like leather, but it's polystone. It's light. I love the worn kind of torn aspect to it. And you can see the mud from the mud hole fight with the leader, with the beaten leader. Very nice.
So here are all the pieces, which uh, which the sheer size is just really hard to fit into my camera. But yeah, I'm just really impressed by the the detailing, the quality, just the the weight, and especially the QC. It's perfect so far. I'm just blown away. Wow, God, just look at those cuts. Amazing. So let's take a closer look at the, the head sculpts. So now I'm going to focus on the portraits. First off, we have the grimacing portrait. That looks like classic Fred Mueller right there. I just can't get past the the texture of the, the cowl. It looks like like a leather. Look at that detailing right there. Just the fidelity of the digital sculpt. It's really hard to achieve by hand too. This is just really next quality, next gen stuff or just quality stuff, especially with the, the creases around the neck. The nostrils, the white of the teeth and the eyes, there's just like a pearl of white and the gums, the redness of the gums. Look at the skin tone, it's just a whole mix of colors there. It's not just one color, it just has this realistic tone to it. And you see some reds. Just the, the skin flex. It's not perfectly uniform, but imperfect like, like skin. And it's the scarring. Just very, very impressed and very, very weighty as well. And the seam work of how the mask comes together. It's just de high quality detailing right there. And most of all the QC seeing where the the junction of the the skin and the mask there isn't any imperfections or bleeds anywhere this is just high quality stuff amazing i'm just blown away so far next is the battle damage portrait which i think a lot of people will be displaying this piece with and you can see he's cut to bits i mean the the mutant leader has really done a number on him He's really been through hell. And the bruising, the sheen of the cuts. Look at that, this is fresh. Just amazing detail work here. And the way it, it just glistens. And the tears of the mask, amazing. And again, the QC is just perfect. No paint bleeds anywhere. I love it. <laughs> this is just amazing. Amazing stuff. It's definitely my favorite portrait. And finally, we have the exclusive portrait. The calm portrait, which, um, which seems oddly out of place, just with the battle damaged suit it has that he's wearing but it'd be nice to have a kind of like a, a pedestal for it because it's a separate display just really impressed again the texture of the the cowl the creases the bunching up around the neck and the clean paint apps just right where the mask meets the skin And just uh, look at that. Look at the skin tone. Absolutely amazing. Very impressed. Very, very impressive. And here is the exclusive um, multiple Batarang hand that he's holding, which uh, I think a lot of collectors would like. It's a nice option to have. Probably this is a, more, more worthwhile than the, 
the comp portrait. But as far as EX or fail, no. I <laughs> if you can get this piece, even the regular, so so worth it. Just opening it up and just experiencing just Prime One's quality in hand. Finally, this this is a must pat must have piece. If you're a big Dark Knight Returns fan, you know you can't go wrong with the regular because all you need is the battle damage portrait and the the grimace portrait. <laughs> I swear, amazing. And here we have a closer look of the base, and this take a this base takes up a huge footprint. I measured it at a around 21 inches wide, 11 inches tall, and around 13 and a half inches deep. So yeah, this is a, a big, <laughs> a big piece. Uh, it's a big piece. But yeah, as you can see, this is just really, really well done and highly detailed. You can see the mutant leader just shackled in the front, with the spiky nipples, and the, I love that kind of a worn, almost scar-like uh, formation around the chest. You can see how eroded it is and worn. Um, generally, I do really like the the theme for the bases for the Arkham line. I do think it's really classy and really fits the museum pose well. And here we have the Frank Miller Batman logo. But yeah, um, it's a really solid base. Really heavy too. I weighed it at around 20 pounds as well. So it's really <clears throat> secure. I mean, it really holds your, it really holds the statue. So I don't think there's any danger of it leaning or tipping or, or anything of that sort. Next up is the main body onto the base. And it goes onto the base with just this one peg. And uh, yeah, just uh, be careful when you're lining it up. And I find that um, you have to press down on a on uh, the peg a bit because it will leave. Uh, there is some room underneath this uh, foot, and it, I do feel you have to push it down just to have it flush all the way. Mine isn't all the way flush, but I suspect with the weight of the statue, it will go down and more. Like it will work its way down. Because I didn't want to really force it because it just feels tight. Um, you know, I tried to lift it up, but it just seems uh, firmly in there. So uh, take that for what it's worth. But uh, yeah, it's solid. It's stable. I don't see it leaning whatsoever. Next, we put on the cape on the neck, which we do it with this peg right in the back here. So if we spin it behind. We see this area there. So basically we just line up the peg. It goes around the neck, line it up, and just firmly place it down. So upon closer inspection, this is actually a paint rub. It doesn't feel like a chip just feels like the paint just kind of like flecked off. Originally, I thought it was a styrofoam. I checked the earlier videos and uh, the earlier clips I had for the unboxing, I did have it. So I'll be contacting the slideshow and hopefully it'll take care of me. So moving on from that bummer, um, we'll go with the rifle hand. And as you can see here, it comes with a peg and a magnet. Is for extra security. So we'll put that in like so. Very secure, not loose. And we'll go with the exclusive hand, the batarang. And we'll go like so. There's no peg into it, there's just a, a magnet. So I think that's how it goes. 
Nothing badass so far. And finally to finish off, I think I'll go with the exclusive portrait just to show it off. And this is probably will be left in the cabinet just because I don't think it really fully goes with the, the suit, with the Battle Damage suit. But there we have the Dark Knight Frank Miller Batman as done by Prime One Studio in one third scale. And he looks really, really badass and really impressive in hand. Wow. I mean, aside from this blemish right there, QC is pretty top notch. Really, really impressed. Just by the sheer presence and the and just the attitude and the stance. Wow. You can see the the folds in the cape. Just utterly badass. Very, very impressed so far. So here we have the completed Prime 1 Dark Knight Returns statue based on the Arkham City designs. And just seeing it up close, really, really impressed. I, this is probably the most impressive statue that I've ever seen just by the fidelity, just by the, the detailing. Just look at the suit. Um, just the, the high quality kind of like designs and patterns, the seams. It almost seems like, a, like fabric. And I love the tautness, the, the wrinkles just around the high stress areas, the weathering of the of the utility belt, and the scratches, the cuts on the, the symbol, and most impressive are the battle damaged parts, or battle damaged areas. You can see the, the high sheen and gloss, uh, the way it just shimmers on the light, and just around the area, just the discoloration with the dried blood. Amazing, amazing, amazing stuff. This is just an incredible statue. Um, even the, the boots, you can see um, some worn parts, some mud um, tracks, I guess, left on the boots and on the cape. is from his battle with the mutant leader. And that iconic moment of him standing triumphant. Amazing. Um, if I had a gripe, it was maybe comic accuracy because I don't think he used this rifle. Um, he was within the, I think he was in the, if I'm not mistaken, the, the blue and gray suit with the yellow bat symbol. And I suspect that's probably going to be addressed later on with a, a blue version of, a, of this. Hopefully it's a completely new statue and not a, not a out and out variant, but um, those who did hold off on buying this, you know, Maybe they're holding on to hope that uh, that will be made. And I'm sure with Prime One's, um, <clears throat> with Prime One's uh, kind of like a sketchy reputation as far as uh, variants go, I'm sure that's a, a possibility in the future. So I'm just gonna switch out uh, other parts for him and see how that looks. goes like that and switch to portrait from the exclusive com to the gritty iconic grimace and there um, I wish they would have had another um, clean hand <clears throat> but it doesn't so yeah I just love the stance I just love um, it's a museum pose, but it's just so imposing. It just tells a story as far as him being triumphant and him being through hell in his battle with the leader. It just seems, I mean, it just shows him battered, bruised, not broken. And it's just so apt uh, for a museum pose. It's dynamic, but a museum pose at the same time. I mean, it just fits the character, the way he's hunched, the way he's like standing almost battered and uh, wilting but not never breaking 
just so much attitude towards this uh, towards the stance and it's dynamic in a way but it fits a museum pose if that makes any sense and finally we're gonna change this up again I'm going to change I'm gonna change this up and put the display that I think I'm sure most uh, collectors that have ordered this will put um, him in so I'm just gonna take out his this is gonna be tough okay jeez. yeah just be very careful when you're taking this out because since it's with the peg it's kind of stubborn so just taking out the The rifle hand and putting in this iconic batarang with the rope. Just putting in his hand here, getting it untangled. Let's be really careful. And this one doesn't have a peg like the gun. I guess it's just because of the weight of the gun. Oh. There we have him. With the battle damage portrait as well. And my god, <laughs> if that doesn't look badass, I don't know what it, what it does. This looks so awesome. Just the, just the weight of him holding the batarang. This is definitely my preferred um, configuration. Very, very awesome. Very cool. Uh, just, yeah, I mean, my first, it's my first Prime 1 statue, my first third scale. I didn't really know where, I don't know where to actually um, display him. But he's definitely the centerpiece of my collection. And for the most part, aside from this, little paint fleck um, perfect experience i mean just impressed by the quality impressed by the weight just the the fidelity uh, as far as the detailing around the suit and the the belt the gloves everything just screams high quality with this piece and whoever has this coming they're not going to be disappointed <laughs> just utterly and completely blown away so this is somewhat embarrassing. Um, so I was unboxing the statue. Apparently I forgot one of his switch out hands. So I, I forgot to look for this hand, which I did not know was, uh, was packaged in. It was like just covered with the cloth. So it's kind of embarrassing, but uh, but yeah, I was looking at the the pamphlet and I just said, hey, where's this hand? Did this come shipped? And sure enough, it was there. And I just, uh, apparently in all the excitement, I forgot. <laughs> Which is totally embarrassing. But yeah. So you could just put this here. and display it with the batarangs or with the closed fist. As far as flaws go and cons, probably the, this, uh, this paint fleck and maybe comic accuracy as far as maybe using the, the rifle. But other than that, nothing. I mean, this is, this is as perfect as it gets, I guess. And as far as positives, what you see is what you get. I mean, it's perfect. It's almost, it's, you know, proto quality. I mean, what we saw in the protos, that's what we got. And <laughs> this is amazing. Just freaking incredible. So yeah, um, hopefully Sideshow and Prime 1 will get this uh, paint uh, flaw taken care of. And, uh, and yeah, I'll get a perfect statue. So just to illustrate how huge a one-third statue is, this is the Prime 1 statue compared to the quarter-scale original Batman Premium format by Sideshow Collectibles. 
and that statue in itself is a huge piece. It's pretty oversized for a one-fourth scale statue and it stands at around 25 and a half inches. And even so, it's completely dwarfed by the Prime 1 piece, which I measured it around 32 and a quarter inches tall. So yeah, I mean, they're both great pieces, but in terms of presence, the Prime 1 totally wins. I mean, what can you say? If you're a big Dark Knight fan and if you're a big uh, Dark Knight Returns fan, I highly recommend picking up this piece, even if it's a regular. I mean, you're not really going to display the the exclusive parts, really. I mean, like, probably the the multiple batter ranks is a cool exclusive to have, but but for the most part, you're going to be displaying it like this, with the grappling hook and uh, that battle damage piece, the battle damage portrait, I mean. So for me, it was a must-have. It is a pricey piece. That's one of the cons. It's pricey, but... Other than that, there's no other con. I mean, the quality is top notch. The detailing is top notch. It's a heavy piece, it's weighty. It's a quality, quality piece. And if you're a Batman fan, if you have this in your collection, a good, I mean, congratulations, because for me, it's, it's the centerpiece of my Batman collection. So yeah, if you, if you guys have this piece coming, I don't know what else to say. You're just gonna be blown away by this piece. So overall, this comes with my highest recommendation. It is expensive, but you know, if you're going for quality over quantity, I'd say go for it. So with that said, this is Spanish Heart. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.